this short video is going to be about the metag leffler function, which comes up quite a bit in fractional calculus. It's not a single function as the name suggests, it's actually more of a family of functions as you'll see shortly. To motivate the idea of the metag leffler function, let's talk about something simpler, the exponential. Recall that the series expansion of the exponential of a complex number z is given by the infinite sum over n of z to the n divided by n factorial. But what if I modify the term in the summation just a bit? Let's replace the z by negative z squared and the n factorial by 2n factorial. And if I do that, this is what I get. I'll simplify the negative z squared term a bit and take out the negative 1 to end up with this expression. Now, does this remind you of another function? Well, it should because this is just a cosine of z. It's the series expansion of cosine z. But what if I modify my exponential series expansion this time with another way? What if I replace the z by negative z squared and the n factorial this time by a single 1? In that case, this is what I'll get. Now check again, do you see anything special about this summation, particularly when the absolute value of z is less than 1? Well, if the absolute value of z is less than 1, then we can express this infinite sum as the following fraction, using the rules of geometric series, which simplifies ultimately to 1 over 1 plus z squared. So notice what happened here. We went from an infinite series describing the exponential to an infinite series describing the cosine and an infinite series describing this rational function. And all we did to get there was make small modifications to the exponential series, replacing z by negative z squared and the n factorial by different variations of it. Now the question becomes, is there a more generic parent function where I can pre-specify certain parameters and get an exponential function, a cosine function, a 1 over 1 plus z squared function? Is there a parent function that lets me do that? Well, there is, and that's what this video is about. That parent function, Albert, I, I mean uh, the metag leffler function. Okay, in my defense, they do look kind of similar. Anyway, the metag leffler function is denoted by this capital E with the subscript alpha comma beta, where alpha and beta are parameters that are found in the denominator of what's being summed over, specifically in the gamma function term. More specifically, what I've shown here is the generalized metag leffler function. In the regular metag leffler function, there's only one parameter alpha because beta is pre-specified as just one. I'll call this definition of the generalized metag leffler function equation one. Note again that the term in the denominator is the gamma function, our generalized factorial, which is given by the following expression. Let's now discuss some examples of the metag leffler function. If I set my alpha as 1 and beta as 1, then my metag leffler function simplifies to this infinite series. Now gamma of n plus 1 is just n factorial, so we get this expression. And if you look up above, this is just the infinite series that represents the exponential of z. So the metag leffler function for alpha 1, beta 1 is just the exponential. Let's look at another example, the metag leffler function of negative z squared for alpha 2 and beta 1. If we convert the gamma function to a factorial, we get 2n factorial in the denominator. And if we simplify the numerator a bit, we get negative 1 to the n times z to the power 2n. And if you again look back up, this is just the infinite series of cosine z. Let's do a third example, the metag leffler function of z for alpha 0 and beta 1, which becomes the following. Now gamma of 1 is the same as 0 factorial, which is just 1, so we have the sum over n from 0 to infinity of z to the n. And if the absolute value of z is less than 1, then this infinite sum is just 1 over 1 minus z, using the formula for the infinite sum of a geometric series. So this is how we can go from the original metag leffler function, our parent function, to an exponential, a cosine, and the 1 over 1 minus z. Now the metag leffler function also satisfies a recurrence property, which I'm going to prove here. It's a pretty quick proof. This recurrence relation lets us go from the metag leffler function of alpha and beta plus alpha to the metag leffler function of alpha and beta. And I'll call this recurrence relation equation 2. So let's start by looking at this first term on the right-hand side of equation 2, and we'll eventually use this first term to prove the recurrence relation. We know from the definition of the metag leffler function that if e at alpha and beta is given by this, then e at alpha and beta plus alpha will be given by the following. I'll multiply both sides by z now to get the first term on the right-hand side of this recurrence relation. Then if I move my z on the right to the inside of the summation, I get a power of n plus 1 on the z. And if I also take the alpha common and the gamma function term in the denominator, 
I get alpha multiplying n plus 1 this time. Let's now change our index by setting k as n plus 1. In that case, when n is 0, k is 1, so now we have our summation starting at k equals 1, but now the n plus 1 is replaced by a simple k. I'll call this equation 2r to denote the right-hand side of equation 2, or part of the right-hand side. Now if I look at the left-hand side of equation 2, the metag leffler function at alpha and beta, then that by definition is just the following. For convenience, I'm using the summation index of k instead of n, so just keep that in mind. If I partially expand out the zero term of this summation and don't expand anything else, this is what we get. Now if we look at equation 2r, this second term on the right, this summation that starts from k equals 1, is exactly equal to z times the metag leffler function at alpha and beta plus alpha, as we showed above. So therefore we have proven this recurrence relation. Now there's also a subtraction version of the metag leffler function recurrence relation, which is given by the following, which I'll call equation 3, and this is the recurrence relation that shows up on the Wikipedia page. You can actually prove this recurrence relation with very similar techniques as what you use to prove equation 2, but I won't do that here, and instead I'll just leave it to you as an exercise. There's one more thing I want to discuss about the metag leffler function. You'll see an animation about this on the Wikipedia page, but let's look at these two metag leffler functions. When you apply the definition to the first function, you get the following. And if you go up and compare this to the infinite series representing the exponential function, you'll note that the summation here is very similar, except that the z is replaced by negative z squared. So in the end, the specific metag leffler function is actually just the exponential of negative z squared. And when you apply equation 1 to the function in b, this is what you get. And if the magnitude or absolute value of z is less than 1, then you can write this infinite series as 1 over 1 plus z squared, just like what we did before. So by varying the alpha parameter in the metag leffler function from 1 to 0, we went from the exponential of negative z squared, the Gaussian, to this rational function. Assuming z is purely a real number, this is what it will look like as you vary the alpha from 1 to 0. You go from this negative z squared exponential, this Gaussian, to this rational function. And that's why the caption says the metag leffler function can be used to interpolate between this Gaussian and this rational function. So hopefully this brief introduction should give you some nice insight into the metag leffler function, so you won't be baffled when it comes up in our later videos on fractional calculus. Anyway, that should do it for this lesson. I'd like to thank the following patrons, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.